Hello once again, Monster Hobbies, model car garage mechanics and builders of the Colonel Rev and Papa Dan 2022 cartoon deformed group build. So I'm going to carry on with my version of the Gomad Nomad. And in this video, I'm going to start building Ron the Californian, who is the driver of this great vehicle. I might also do stuff like try to build up that chrome plated engine and uh, Ron's surfboard and the other little interior components. Now, I still haven't really figured out a color to paint this body yet, but I'm kind of narrowing it down. So I might have a little sneak peek at the end of the video on body and the paint color that I chose. So tune in for that. Anyway, let's go down to the bench and start working on Ron the Californian. <laughs> All right, so let's find Ron the Californian as we take the box apart here. It's a little bit stuck. Now, yeah, you see, I still haven't painted the body in this yet. I did notice something though. Remember before in the earlier video, I said I could flock this? Well, I can't <laughs> because that piece of glass, wherever it should be, here we go. It's a, uh, it's completely covered over here. So I would need to flock inside there and then glue this into the roof area. Okay, so anyway, where are we here? Here he is, around the Californian. So what I've done is I've actually glued the head together and I cleaned up all the seam lines on the hands. So I will be using some Citadel Games Workshop paint in that uh, their uh, six stage paint type of thing and I'll show you how to paint Ron's head. And uh, that will be pretty much basically it. I would normally spray this with some black primer but, you know, due to the fact that I'm running out of time, I don't think I'll be able to do that. So we will pretend that Ron is painted with some black primer. I'm also going to paint this interior bit, and I will paint that today. Uh, I'm going to need to paint it one color and then come in and do the dashboard and the seat and maybe the floor a different color. But uh, these Ron parts will go in here somewhere. Not quite sure. Oh yeah, that's the gear stick. So it'd be something like this. However, he's going to be in there. So uh, let's get this going. So what I'll do is I will give a little sanding to the interior, and I will be using this 3M 1000 grade sandpaper. Now I know it's quite fine, but what I want to do is just give a little bit of a scratch surface in here, so that the paint will bond to it. And lucky for me, I found a. A piece of this that I cut off earlier so uh, all I need to do is this do that enough times and I'll get a nice little tooth in here sand it down a bit and the paint will stick a little better into that uh, sandpaper tooth and here's our interior after I painted it with some semi-gloss white now I'm just gonna end up letting this dry for a while while I work on Ron because basically this is all I can do for the interior for right now I want to paint the dashboard and the seat, but overall this looks pretty decent as it is. I got a good spray job on there, despite it being windy outside, but actually I sprayed it on the front porch and the wind is blowing in that, uh, you know, direction that's hitting the back porch. So I, I hope this all works out at the end, but overall, I mean, that's probably one of the best paint jobs I've done all summer. Here we have the parts for Ron. This is his right hand on the shifter knob, his head and his left hand driving with the steering wheel. Now one thing that's going to make this hard is trying to paint this because basically it's like painting a ball right here. There's nothing to hold on to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the spare sprue that we've got lying around from our kit and I will cut off little pieces and file the ends of those pieces flat. And then just with a little teeny touch of that tester's red glue, I will glue them onto the sprue sort of like this. And then that way there is something for me to hold on, which will be the sprue like a handle, while I paint the hands and the head and the hair and everything else. Now here's our parts after I added that styrene rod onto there. And I can always cut or break these off after everything is painted. I also added in my little clothes pegs here so I can hold them from back here, also to set them while the paint's drying. Now I will be using acrylic so this will dry pretty quickly. There's the head and the gear shift hand and the steering wheel hand. And I also added in the shift lever here, which I'll just paint that all silver. And then that goes underneath the hand there like that. 
once we get it all into the floorboards. So according to the back story in our instruction sheet, Ron is a California surfer dude, and I do believe he would be spending a lot of time out in the sun on catching those waves, all that kind of thing. So I figure he should have a tanned flesh, and I'm going to use this sequence from the Games Workshop using their Citadel paints down below here. And what we have to start with is Bugman's Glow for a base color, followed by Reichland Flesh Shade, which is a shade paint, which is very thin and will go into all the cracks. And then after that, you bring it up with Cadian Flesh Tone. So this will bring a lighter color and tonality into the paint. And finally, we go with Kislev Flesh, which will be used on the top as a dry brush. Now here it says we do use Elder Flesh, which is a dry base color. But I find that it isn't really that necessary with these. So I'll just use these four paints to bring Ron a nice skin tone and bring him to life. So here's the parts for Ron after I painted on the Bugman's Glow. You can see it's a rather dark kind of paint color, sort of a dark tan brown sort of thing. But once this dries, we'll add on the Reichland Flesh Shade, and you can see how the wash will go into all the cracks. Again, this is a little bit wet. I just finished painting it. So we will uh, let that dry a bit and then move on. So now the parts for Ron have dried, and we're going to now add in this Reichland Flesh Shade. And what I'll do is I'll just move these hands out of the way. Just concentrate on Ron's head. So we'll open this up. Oh, I'm running out of this stuff. <laughs> okay, now I've painted around the back on the bottom of his neck here. So what we can do is just get the paintbrush in that Reichland flesh shade. And we'll just go like this. And this is basically it. So as you can see, it's nothing too exciting. Nothing too challenging. Now I did paint in Ron's mouth here, but when it came to the eyes, I just left them with a white plastic. Uh, that was sort of because there's a bit of a natural shape in there that kind of permit or prevented the brush from getting in any further. But overall, it's, I mean, it can be done with a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm just adding this everywhere. And I know this paint kind of looks like a big fat mess, but once all the uh, steps are done, you'll see how good it ends up looking in the end. So that's basically it. Now this stuff does take a long time to dry, so I would suggest doing this before dinner time. So then <laughs> paint this stuff on, and go get a meal, go, you know, start your oven. <laughs> basically, we're having fish and chips tonight. So, you know, that's 450 Fahrenheit. So that takes maybe about 10 minutes for an oven to warm up. I don't have one of those new, brand new, funky Space Age ovens where you just, you know, push a button and all of a sudden it's 450 degrees right off the bat. Anyway, the fish and chips in this time, if you're watching this video like 16 years from now, <laughs> they still take uh, 26 minutes to cook. That's a... Uh, I'm... I cook a little longer because uh, my oven, I don't know if it gets as hot as it's supposed to. And they say all these times vary. So basically I am uh, cooking that 14 minutes per side. The instructions say 12, so it's not too bad. It's just going to end up with a few more minutes. So yeah, now there's the, uh, the hand and you can see just how this shade actually goes down into the low spots and pools in there. And that's exactly what you want. And uh, once that dries, we'll see uh, just how much, how deeper that is. Now, if you noticed here, I tried to avoid the steering wheel. So I am going to paint this with some color. I just got to determine what that color is going to be. So again, I'll try to avoid painting that steering wheel. Okay, so you see just how nice this flows in. And so on this date in history, I will be eating fish and chips. <laughs> I don't know. That's a legacy that will live long after uh, my kids are gone. And, you know, when some, when some YouTube archaeologist is searching up our uh, old Monster Hobbies website and whatever, they will come across this, this great, development. Maybe they'll write an epic adventure about how I had fish and chips. Do you write an epic song? 
Oh, Trevor, he was a man who loved his fish and chips, and so he ate his chips, and he went to the north, and he went to the south, and east and west, and ate his chips. Oh, the chips! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed that. So now I am going to go and eat that fish and chips, wait my 20 or 34 minutes. That should be enough time for all this stuff to dry out. This is actually, this paint takes the longest time to dry of all the Citadel paints, basically because it's just so, it's not really watered down, but you know, it's made thinner in order to flow through those cracks. So again, that's what takes the, uh, the time drying is for all that thin paint to eventually dry out. So here's Ron after the Reichland flesh shade has dried. Now, I was going to come back earlier to this last night, right after dinner, but then my daughters, they wanted to play a board game, so we ended up playing that Walt Disney uh, Pirates of the Caribbean DVD game where you sail around in your pirate ship and try to get plunder and booty and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, I ended up going to sleep at 10 o'clock at night because it was a pretty long day yesterday. Anyway, uh, so that's how long this paint has dried, basically overnight. Didn't really need that long. But at any rate, you can see how it all pooled into the fingers here, on the knuckles, into the hand grip, and down on the arms. Just move this out of the way so you can see how it worked on Ron's face. Now again, this is looking very, very dark as a color. So we will be brightening it up with the Cadian Flesh Tone, as well as the Kislev Flesh. Now both of these dry pretty quickly, and in order to put them on, I use these really stiff bristle brushes. These came in a pack from Walmart. They are the Artist Series, if that helps anybody. But I, they're just a random brush pack. So I got a number four and a zero, the four being this one here, the zero being this one. So what I will do is I will dip a bit of or just the bristle tips into the Cadian flesh tone, and then you uh, will, or I will paint them down this way from the top down, and it'll get into all the little high spots and whatever, and leave the wash and the base into the low spots. So I will start to do that and show you how it all works. So here's our paint, nicely opened, and I'll just carefully get a little bit in those bristles and then I will wipe this out just a bit so this should be good okay let's start at the back <laughs> just in case okay so I'm just dry brushing and you can see that it's starting to pick up on those high points in there just at the back of his neck I'm not worrying about Oops, there it is. I'm not worrying about the hair so much. But there you can see how it's collecting on that edge of the base of his neck. Just put a little more from down here. I hope there's not too much color on this plate below. <laughs> okay, let's start from his forehead and move down. See, there we go. You can see now he's starting to come up from the base wash and the uh, the shade there starting to look more more like a human <laughs> okay so we just get on the top of the nose there come on down here Used to be hard to get below that cheekbone area. Move the palette out of the way. There we go. Okay, let's move this so we can concentrate on what Ron looks like under the gray. I'll take this peg off here too. Okay. I'm going to go up this way just to get that cheek a little bit better. Okay, and then down on his chin. Grab a little more paint here. Come 
Come on, run. I want some skin <laughs> getting on you. Okay. Okay, so I'm, yeah, you can see that he's coming back up a bit, looking a little more uh, like proper skin tone. All right, so I'll do the hands off screen and then we'll take a look at it. And here's Ron after using the Cadian flesh tone on his head and hands. So you can see that it is getting more closer to flesh, I guess, as well as on the steering wheel here. Now, I don't know, maybe I didn't use the best brush Sometimes you can just paint this with a normal brush. Just make sure you uh, paint on the highlighted parts, like the tops of the fingers, and not go down into the knuckle part, or where the fingers are together, I guess I should say. But basically, this is how it ends up looking. So again, there it is into the car, <laughs> the gear shift lever. But overall, you get the idea. So next up, we're going to do the same thing and use the Kislev flesh, and we'll see just how much that brightens up the skin tone. Right, so now with the Kislev flesh, you really want to get the top surfaces. So this is where the uh, sun is going to actually be. So we'll try to get these fingertips on here. And then what we'll do is we'll just go down the front a little bit. Onto the top of the knuckle. And maybe just a bit down this way. Okay, so that's basically how you want to apply this stuff. Just so that it looks brighter up on the top. But naturally shadowy, you know, getting down in progression more along the bottom. So overall that's how the tanned flesh combination ends up looking. And it's just perfect for Ron the Californian. So now here's Ron's body parts after being painted with all four of those Games Workshop colors. Next up we'll have to put in his eyes and his mustache and hair, which I think I'll do as a blonde color. And then I also have to figure out what color to paint the steering wheel. But overall this is how the skin tone end up looking in the end. Again, really nice uh, work with Games Workshop. Also have to paint his teeth. So what I did was use the Kislev going from the top down, but underneath here it is still the color which was from before, which was the Cadian flesh tone. Again, as you can see, really, really nicely done. How will he look in the car? Well, probably really good. Next, I'm going to paint Ron's hair, and I want him to be blonde, but I'm not going to use the Games Workshop yellow because that really comes out as being yellow. So what we have here is XV88, Reichland Flesh Shade again, Baylor Brown, and Zemistri Desert. Now these are all named after like places in the Warhammer world, but you can see the, the desert looks yellowish. So once we paint Ron, it should look blonde. Now I'm not going to go through the steps again like I did with the skin tone, because I think you understand the principles of how I uh, am dry brushing with the paints here. So what I'll do is I'll just paint this onto Ron's head, and then I'll show you the results. Here's Ron all painted up after doing all the different colors. So you can see that now his hair is looking a little more blonde than, you know, bright yellow. So it's sort of a dirty blonde, I guess you'd call it. But overall, I think I ended up doing this pretty nicely. Now there isn't really any indication where these parts of Ron glue into the car. The only thing that locks it in is the gear shift lever right here, or lever, which would be sticking up, and that's where his hand here would go onto. So somewhere back here you'd need to scrape the paint a little bit, and then I guess the best way to do it is to have the steering wheel in here somehow, and then his head back here against the seat. So this area would be open for a passenger. But yeah, basically this is what it's showing right here in the instructions. So again, no clear indication as to where the head and the hands go. I also have to get these little goggles on here and glue them into Ron's face and paint the rims outside. So these could either be a leather on the outside or maybe a brass or a gold or something. I'm not quite sure what they would have been. Maybe they're just normal sunglasses. Maybe paint black around the edges. I don't know. I'll take a look and see how it goes.
Now one thing that I do have that's kind of cool is these are stickers of the 57 Chevy upholstery pattern and they came from one of these old Wheels of Fire snap together kits from Ravel. So maybe I could just take the two of these and like bend them over the seat. I'll have to look at real 57 Chevy seats to see what this would be like. But you know, might be a good idea. I also have these longer ones. I can't re quite remember how this went. One's for the back, one's for the front. But I never used them, so in this case any would work on this, just as long as they fit in that right location. So there we go, have a look at that. That's actually pretty good. I didn't really want the seat to be white, but you know, now that I stuck these on here, I don't think I'm gonna, you know, paint it any other color. This will look good once you get Ron's head back there. Just like he's sitting in a real 57 Chevy. So here we have Ron's interior painted so far. I'm using this green color down here as a carpet. Notice how I shaped the paint around to make this look like the bottom of the seat. And I also used those uh, wheels of fire, the 57 Chevy decals. They're actually stickers. I cut them back a little bit because uh, I didn't have them quite... Well, the stickers were longer than the seat that I made up. But at any rate, you can see just how much this does look like a 57 Chevy. Now, one thing that is kind of a bit upsetting is there are no gauges or decals or anything for that instrument panel. But I was looking through all my parts box extra decals and I came across this. And this is from like a Japanese Zero or something like that. But that's the uh, the instruments for the cockpit. And I know there's, they're really, really tiny looking. But uh, I do think they will fit in here actually just perfectly. So I'll tr uh, hopefully this is uh, still good and the decal film will actually separate off here. But I think I'll try to float that right down onto this area right in front of the steering wheel. And then another thing I was thinking of, this is sort of a gas or dragster sort of car. So I might try to find some of these decals in here like the uh, Valvoline or whatever, and I'll put them on this side of the dashboard just so that this is filled out and looks more like a drag racing kind of thing. One other thing I was thinking of was using this round 57 Chevy Wheels of Fire sticker and putting it dead center right in here, but <laughs> two reasons. First off, this is not a Wheels of Fire kit, and second off, this could be pretty hard to try to center a roundel in the back, especially with no guidelines or anything. So I will get that decal on there, and then we can take a look at this thing. Maybe I'll glue Ron in there too. I'm going to have to cut through this de or the sticker paper and uh, glue his body in there, so that's going to be interesting. Anyway, well, let's check that out. So here's the Gomad Nomad interior with Ron inside it. And as you can see, the black stickers from the upholstery pattern look really nice in there. Now I tilt this forward and you can see the instrument panel as well as the stickers on the dashboard. And just turning this around, there's Ron with his goggles on. I painted these with the testers light green, and I think they look pretty good considering that the interior is green as well. And everything else like that. Now underneath I did not paint this flat black. I probably should. I'm not too sure how much of this you can actually see from up and underneath. I think that interior... Um, uh, sorry, the chassis there pretty much blocks it all off, so I think I'll just leave it at that. Now here we have Ron sitting on the chassis, and as you can see, it does look like the chassis is wider than the interior by quite a bit. So that means when the body is hooked on here, you won't be seeing up underneath. So hopefully I can get away with not painting it black underneath. But of course, a dry fit is always recommended before you glue anything together. So actually, one thing I can do, just for a little fun, there's that glass top. So that would just go right there. Call that our, our bird cage or something like that. So there it is. I mean, look at how clear that top is. You don't even notice it's on there. <laughs> so again, a really nice, nice work. It was in a separate bag. So I'm just going to put that back in here so that it doesn't get scratched up. But overall, that's really nice. Now the next pieces I have to glue together is basically the engine with the blower and the flycatcher up here, as well as the little front chrome grill that goes on for the radiator that I missed before. And then we've got the three-piece boogie board. So if I just take the instructions out of the way, underneath I've got our chrome components. And this is really going to be easy. All I need to do is just clip them off the parts tree 
and then remove the chrome on the back where it's going to connect to the blower at the front here. So I'll have to size that up a bit and then cut off the scoop from the parts tree and sand the bottoms down and then fit that together and just glue it in. And that's what I'll do off camera. The boogie board, again, same kind of thing. There's mold marks underneath, but I'll sandpaper them out. Then i got to figure out a really interesting way to hold this somehow and paint it. And I'll also have to glue the fin on with a little propeller. So here we have Ron's big blower and his boogie board all glued together. Now, one thing I did do is I glued the top and bottoms, of course, and the three-piece blower. I also painted the little drive belt here black, as you might be able to see. And then I touched up with some of my my uh, old testers chrome paint on those spots where the uh, parts tree was cut off. What I noticed is this model is kind of interesting because where the parts tree is cut off, they equaled it on both sides and almost in the same location. So it didn't really mess up any of the chrome along this side, which again is a nice thing. So, oh yeah, and the other thing is when you glue the blower onto the uh, big bug scoop, there's a lot of play in here and here. So glue it, look at it upside down, make sure everything is square when it's upside down, and then just let it sit and dry. Now again, let's just check that. Yeah, I think I got it about right. Okay, so that will dry. Now the boogie board, here we'll move this. The boogie board I had to uh, cross sand a lot with my harder sandpaper and then smooth it out because there was sink marks here and here and there just behind that propeller. Now you can't even tell. It looks like one piece. I also had to sand the top just so that it would get a nice paint grip. And then down the one side of the fin was a great big uh, raised mold mark, which luckily I was able to sand that down. And then I had to get rid of the mold marks on the back of the fan blades. I did that with my number 16 hobby blade. Overall, though, now this boogie board looks good, and it just needs a color on it, which you can see next week. So I was going to show a sneak peek of the color of the body, so get ready. Well, I hope you enjoyed my build for the day, getting Ron done from our Go Mad Nomad kit. And tune in later to see the end results of the great car. Hopefully I can get this all done before our time runs out on that Deform Cartoon Group build. So I've been a bit busy trying to make all the videos for my own contest, which is coming up, the Monster Hobbies Build a Monster Contest. And that one finalizes on December... Th er, December. October 31st. It's a Halloween contest. If you want to know more about it, check out our intro video right up here. And until next time, everybody, happy model building and good luck on your group build.